Are we ready? <laughs> we go. Good morning. Good morning on this beautiful, rather clammy morning. <laughs> Are we not blessed to have air conditioning in this building? So it's wonderful to greet all of you here. It's wonderful to greet all of the folk that are at home watching. I hope you will find some meaningful message in this service. Let's begin with some announcements. So we're on the summer schedule. Obviously, you found us, 9 o'clock, you're remembering. Uh, the garden group. Garden group usually meets the first Friday of July. We are not meeting at all this month. Too many other things going on. We're going to postpone that until August 2nd. So watch for that announcement. July 6th, Praise in the Park. What a great place to go to bring a friend, to introduce them to our fellowship. Deb does a great job with a devotional and all kinds of recreational things you can do in such a peaceful place. Our communion team will be out next week bringing communion to our homebound, those that are in care homes. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that, please talk to Jill Kristen. It's a daunting experience for some, I understand that. But maybe you'd like to come along as an observer and just feel what that ministry is about. It is so meaningful for the folks that you take it to and believe me, it becomes meaningful for you. So you might feel more comfort if you just go along with somebody else and watch what happens. July 10th, we have a luncheon, another social event, a great place to bring friends. Uh, that starts at noon, and it's at the Avenue Diner. And please let Jenny or Clyde know. Uh, if you're coming, if you just drop in, that's absolutely fine too. The 7th through the 13th, the UM Army. This place will be humming with people from all over the United States. If you'd like to help, volunteer, uh, please let Debbie know. She'd appreciate that. All kinds of things going on. Um, and they may even be able to squeeze in another project. I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, anyway, talk to her for more information. Uh, you already passed Barry. Um, Chicken barbecue is July 19th. Again, lots of volunteers needed. It. It's just a one-night event. Um, but make sure you've got your tickets because we usually sell out. July 28th to August 1st, Vacation Bible School. You've got children, grandchildren, children in the neighborhood. Invite them. Courtney and Jen Reinheimer do a beautiful job. Courtney's here today. She's doing a marvelous job with our Facebook, as she always does. So if you have questions, talk to her. And if you'd like to volunteer, um, she will be glad to hear from you. We changed a few things up today. Um, so I'm just going to mention just a couple of joys and concerns. Next weekend, what a joy it will be to welcome Pastor Paul and his wife, Katie. Some of us have bumped into them. They're a wonderful couple, um, so outgoing, so relaxed. They are just excited to be part of the ministry here at Trucksville. And then the following weekend, the 14th, um, is our welcome brunch, immediately following this service over in Fellowship Hall. Uh, Lori Pettit is here today, too. You'll find her up in the balcony if you don't see her down here. Um, she is looking for volunteers, too. Contributions to help offset the cost of the breakfast, um, if you'd like to volunteer to bring something or help in any way. So please let her know. Uh, Pastor Jay, a couple of messages Blessing that he got through um, something that kind of cropped up last minute for him. He had a procedure done. It all went well. The really good news is he has hip surgery scheduled. 
August 12th, and he never loses his sense of humor, does he? His sister is scheduled one week before. So if you have an app for an orthopedic doctor's uh, site, let him know. He's looking for a coupon. <laughs> Buy one, get one free. <laughs> we also ask for prayers for two little boys, Bo and Boyd Jenkins. They are actually in London. Both boys, if you can believe it, are very challenged with vision problems. Uh, and they found a doctor willing to do surgery in London. They are there for th uh, three months recovering. So prayers for that family, for their dad who's with them. Um, and they sent a postcard to the Glowich family actually letting them know everything is going so well at this point. Uh, Pastor Jay also sent a picture and uh, said, praise God for the healing that has occurred in the Damara family. So maybe you saw that. Just quickly, Judy Reggie asked for relationship healing. Morgan Jolly for a friend who's gone into labor early. So we pray for a successful delivery there. Jen Reinheimer, their son Austin. Austin has had heart challenges since he was a baby. He's been on medication, high dosage now. They have to take him off. So the next few days are critical. He goes for uh, a procedure, an ablation actually, July 5th at CHOP. The challenging part will be while he's off that medication. So pray uh, for his care during this time and comfort for his whole family. And we pray the procedure goes well. And Christina Malice uh, asking for prayers for her friend, uh, Joanne. There's lots more in our newsletter. So please pick up a copy. There are plenty back there. Um, so you can update on those things, lots of information. So now, I invite our bell ringer, to bring out that call to the community. And as we light the light of Christ, bringing him into our service to dwell with us and listen to the prelude from Dr. Steve.
Thank you, Dr. Steve. I would also ask, just at this time, some special prayers for special friends of this church, for Chuck Gomer and Vi. Um, there are many struggles that come up in life. And as you know, Chuck is at um, the nursing home at the Meadows. And just trying to work out that care plan is so difficult sometimes. So please keep them both in your prayers. Um, we know how difficult it is to be the caregiver too, Vi. So we pray for your strength and comfort and hope you find some solutions soon. So here we are, that in-between time. One pastor is left and we await the arrival of the next one. We know this is not unique. The churches have long experienced this change and we ourselves have been through this many times. But the proverbial one, day clo one door sorry, closes, another one opens. We know that a new path forward is found. On a Church of Christ website where the congregation was facing similar changes, I found these words. Times of transition can bring lament, uncertainty, and disorientation. In your own life, I know many of you have may, maybe have experienced the transition of age. I know about that one. A job change, health changes. Changes in our culture may leave you feeling disorientated. But the writer goes on to say, the Bible addresses the stark reality of transition and the very real human emotions that come with it. Think of the Israelites, he says. God calls them out of slavery into the promised land. But first they have that little space, don't they, in the wilderness where they have to learn dependency on God. Then they get to the promised land. They forget about that dependency. They become comfortable. They choose their own way of doing things. Moses warns them, be careful that you do not forget the Lord. Today, I feel sometimes Christians also have a certain level of comfort. We too assume that we are in the promised land. We no longer depend on God. Or can we trust God? Can we truly move forward? Transition, you know, brings us a new sense of purpose, a rekindled relationship with God, and hope for the future. In our service today, we are including three storytellers, each relating a time of transition in their lives, but also importantly, offering hope, a path forward, a path where God is leading, and lighting our way. Dr. Steve chose a beautiful hymn for us to open worship today. It's number 383. This is a day of new beginnings. One line here says, seeking new paths, sure to find. God is making all things new. The words are on the screen or you can follow in the hymnal. I invite you to stand as you are able.
I invite you now to remain standing as we profess our faith using the Statement of Faith of the United Church of Canada. I chose this one because I think the words resonated with the theme of our service today. Will you join me? We are not alone. Thank you. You may be seated. So at this time, transitions sometimes bring us new friends, and we've certainly seen several recently. Um, so for our children's moment, I have a good friend that I just met and got to know a little. Angie Stanton has been kind enough to step up and share a few words for our children's moment. I invite any children here to come forward. Good morning. Good morning, church. When I was growing up in Puerto Rico, I was the oldest child. I was kind of on my own for about four or five years. I'm three years older than my sister that came after me. And it takes a couple of years before you learn how to talk and all that. But I used to love to talk. I would go outside. We live in this little cabin in the woods. And there was a lot of land. And we had a lot of plants. So I, I talked to the plants. And my mother, she was always paying attention because I was by myself out there. And she said, Angie, who are you talking to? And I used to say, Mom. I'm talking to God. And she, sip it, because she said, she's talking to God. That's a good thing. Well, that's what we do when we say the God's prayer, right? Our Father, that's what we do. We talk to God. We have given us the words to talk to him. Why wouldn't we want to talk to him, right? I'm going to say it in Spanish so that you get an idea what it sounds like. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase su voluntad aquí en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy el pan de cada día y perdona nuestras deudas como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos dejes caer en la tentación. Soy, y no nos dejes caer en la tentación, mas líbranos de todo mal. Amén. That's what it sounds in Spanish. Now, let's say it in English. Please join me with these beautiful children as we say, our Father's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you all.
Angie, thank you so much, and thank you to all the children and their helpers that came forward this morning. We've reached a time now of our first storyteller, Mark Humphrey. We all know Mark. He has a beautiful story to share. If you'd like to come forward, Mark. And, and please pray. There is a video. We had a little trouble last night. We're hoping it works today. Good morning. I tried to play that on my phone last night, uh, and it kind of worked, but kind of didn't. So I'm just going to highlight a verse if it doesn't uh, play. So um, I don't want to take a lot of time this morning, but I will tell you that 16 plus years ago, I had a major life transition that I was very ill prepared for. And um, unfortunately for me, or maybe fortunately, I didn't have God in my life at that point. So having been raised Catholic and been involved in the church and that been an altar boy, there came a time when I was uh, an early teenager where I stopped talking to God. And that lasted for about 30 years. And this transition came upon me. And uh, again, I was, not, I was not prepared for that. Not that we're <laughs> prepared for any transitions, but particularly uh, I was hurting during this transition. And I will tell you about that, but that's not what my story is this morning. So if you'd like to hear that one, I'll tell you another one. <laughs> but uh, what happened then at that point is I was taught how to have a relationship, a personal relationship with um, God, um, however I saw God, which was very um, not familiar with me, but it worked with me. And I started to become closer to God as I understood him. And what a beautiful time in my life that was. And little did I know at that point, as my connection grew and my spirituality grew, that I would be um, transitioning pretty much uh, on a daily basis for the following 16 years. Um, and it started really about a year after that major transition when I lost a job that I had had for 15 years. And at that point, I was... Um, you know, in my mid-40s, and I had worked since I was 15 years old. I had never lost a job, no matter um, how uh, much of a disaster I was uh, personally. I was able to keep uh, my professional life together and was successful. Uh, but that was back in 08 and 09 when the economy was uh, extremely difficult to find a job. So, as um, Morag said this morning... Um, you know, the saying is that when one door closes, uh, another one opens, which is really, I don't like that saying, right? Because what it doesn't say is, you know, God doesn't tell you how long you're going to be in that hallway. And sometimes, sometimes you're there a long time, sometimes you're there uh, a short time. So um, I lost that job, and I was in that hallway for about two years. Um, and... Again, at that time, I was still growing in my relationship with God and uh, with Jesus. And, um, you know, I approached the, that transition time a lot differently than I did any time I had to transition in the previous 30 years and how blessed I was. Um, so that is my story on transitioning without God and transitioning with God. And I can tell you from personal experience, it's a lot easier having God in your life when you're faced with transitions. Uh, so this morning I wanted to, and here's another uh, blessing that I have is the word, right? The living word. So they asked me to pick a, uh, a quote, uh, a uh, scripture verse and a hymn. So the scripture verse I find a lot of times by just Googling, you know, um, <laughs> Bible verse related to transition. And I come across this one, which I've never read or I don't remember reading. And it's from Isaiah 43. And it reads, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Sounds exciting. <laughs> but again, when you're in that hallway, um, maybe you're not reading that with such uh, inflection, right? So that's why I titled my talk Fear and Trust, right? My, my, 
my nature is to uh, fear, right? So I could be a fear-based individual. I look back now on, on those 16 years that I've had, 16 plus years, and all the things that happened to me. And to this day, like every day is just filled with transition. And I've actually kind of started to consider myself a transition expert. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, and, and my wife helps me with that on a daily basis as she reminds me that, hey, it's, it's just for today, right? So we get through the day and we, and we face tomorrow with, with God in our lives. So the uh, hymn I picked was a little non-traditional and I'm not sure if many of you know it. Uh, it's by an artist um, and I believe his name is Zach Williams. Can we go to the next slide? Yes. And uh, I'm not sure if you know him. If you don't know him, I would encourage you to... Uh, Look him up. He is a singer-songwriter, very talented individual. He has a very um, uh, tough story, some of which I can relate to. And uh, he spreads the word now through his music and uh, on a, a prison ministry. So I think this video is not the one that he's singing in prison. I think this is just a, a lyric video. So follow along. There is a lyric that I wanted to spotlight, and I don't have it up here. It's in the second verse, so pay attention to the second verse. I thank you for your time, and I look forward to our other speakers this morning. Thank you. Such beautiful words that we find in music. God, the pain taker that we just heard in that last video, but the way maker. And now Jesus is my path. That's all we need to remember. I invite our ushers now to come forward. Gracious God, your abundant love, care, and gifts for us are overwhelming. They're everywhere. Give us eyes to see them. We humbly return a little now to your care, to your ministry, to make disciples here at Trucksville United Methodist Church. May we use these gifts wisely. In the name of your precious Son, our Lord. Amen.
Now we come to another story, a very different story. I invite Rick to come forward. Rick's story is one of amazing courage. I know some of you are familiar with some of it. You may learn some new things, but we deeply appreciate his time with us today. Look how well he negotiates the space. <laughs> when we redesign the sanctuary, we're gonna make much bigger space up here. <laughs> Hold it close. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Rick O'Donnell, for those who don't know. And if it's okay with everybody, I'd like to start with a small prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, <laughs> bless us all for being here this morning. And we all want to uh, bless Pastor Jay um, for his recent surgery and his upcoming hip surgery. Make him well and please relieve him of all his pain. Bless him in his new transition of retirement. Um, we would like to also ask for blessings for Pastor Paul and give him the strength to lead us and uh, give our church family the courage and confidence um, to follow down our journey of faith. This we ask in your son's name. Amen. So... Uh, Last night, I think I babbled on a little too long, so I'm going to cut it a little shorter today. But anyway, um, my, I had a, a different type of transition because I had two transitions that occurred on the very same day, um, two of the biggest transitions of my entire life. So for 50 years, I went on without any God in my life, no faith. Um, I always hoped that there was a God, but I just couldn't see it. I couldn't grasp it. So uh, on the morning of October 4th, 2019, I had fallen out of a tree and broke my back and severed my spinal cord along with several other injuries and as I lay there on the ground in the woods uh, speaking to a 911 um, receiver I just had kind of calmed down and taken some deep breaths and that's when I I felt something different I sort of uh, didn't know what it was at the time but I perceived it to be God um, coming down next to me and assuring me that everything will be okay. So uh, I was found and taken to the hospital, went, underwent many surgeries, and my wife Susie had told me that the first thing I had said to her was, is this how I'm going to be saved? So I knew then and there that that was the case, and I was intrigued by it, and for days and months to come, I would study and watch and try and learn as much as I can about God, and uh, I gave myself up to him and had him take over my, my, my transition of healing in both ways, physically and spiritually. Um, it was hard in both, both ways. It was very hard. Susie and I, uh, Susie had to make a huge transition. She had to become my caretaker. And no one, we didn't know what to do. Day by day, we were faced with new challenges. Uh, but she was a great help and continues to be my biggest supporter and help um, to this day. Thankfully, 
I had her by my side to help me understand my faith as it grew. And I honestly would be lost without her. She's my best friend, and she knows exactly what I need when I need it. So I continue to grow. I look forward to getting better physically. Every day I'm met with new challenges that I have to transition to. Every day with my faith, I'm met with new challenges that I have to transition to. And I'm, I'm taking it uh, with open arms. My faith, I seem to be excited about. I love my church family. My church family, I, I was uh, friends with the church for, for years. And just recently in May became a new member. So I was excited about that. I wanted to do it while Pastor Jay was still here. Uh, but the church family has pulled me along and supported me given me everything I've needed as far as love, uh, spiritual, um, just everything. They were phenomenal from day one. Meals, um, cards, phone calls, everything. It continues to this day. So I want to thank everybody here. Um, I want to thank my family. And most of all, I want to thank God. And... That basically sums up my story. So I'm still transitioning into both. If more, I can just hold this for me for one moment. Okay, so the uh, Morag helped me with the scripture reading today. We both agreed that Psalm 62, chapters 5 through 8 would be appropriate for my transition. And it reads, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times. So next, if we could flip the slide, my hymn. Morag also helped me. Uh, we discussed this hymn and picked out the verse 1 and 3. It's hymn number 377. It is called, It Is Well With My Soul. So if Dr. Steve will lead us, we will uh, sing it together.
Okay, I have one more thing I'd like to plug something if I can. Um, Wednesday morning prayer group, I encourage everybody to please check it out. You don't have to show your face. Um, you don't have to speak at all, but there's a few of us here today that are members, and I swear it has helped me so immensely that I, I can't even describe it. I won't miss it. Even, Su even if Susie's away on vacation, I still tune in. I don't need her to do some things. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you very much. An amazing prayer group, so do consider joining 615, right? 615? 6, 615? Yes. Just for half an hour. You can come in your PJs, have your coffee. You don't have to be on the screen. It takes courage, not only to go through a journey like the one we just heard, but to come up here and speak and share that. We are grateful. Thank you, Rick. I just would like to mention now, I know there's a few of you um, who recently became part of our fellowship. We are grateful for that. We hope you received a warm welcome. Pastor Jay kind of caught the welcome team a little bit out uh, because he moved you through that transition really quickly. And I'm reading the service coming up and oh, there's new members. I don't have new member bags ready. We have them today. If you would come up at the end of the service and please choose one, there are bags here for if you're a onesie and if you're a family uh, or a couple, they're over here as well. And don't get excited, there are some big ones they don't contain anymore. I just ran out of small ones. <laughs> so, with that, we have been blessed to receive many new folks coming from the Plains United Methodist Church. Not an easy transition when a church closes. This morning, I am delighted to welcome Becky Baran, who's going to come forward and share a little story, and they have a unique perspective. They already know Pastor Paul. Good morning. I'm Becky Baran, as Morag said. I'm part of the Plains train. Um, so this morning, I just wanted to share a couple things with you. So the scriptures I chose when they asked me to do this was Philippians 4, chapter 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The other scripture I thought was very appropriate for today was 2 Samuel verses 10 through 12. Be strong and let us be courageous for the sake of our people and the cities of our God and may, not, and may the Lord do what seems good to him. So we've all had times of difficulty in our lives, losing a loved one, having to make a difficult decision, or going through a difficult experience in our professional lives or education. We may also experience difficulties in our religious journeys. As I said, I'm part of the Plains train. Um, Pastor Jay fondly called the parishioners from Plains that came here the Plains train. So. I belonged to Plains my entire life. I attended Sunday school there. I was an active, active member of the youth fellowship. I was confirmed at Plains. My husband and I were married there. And I also held several positions on the church council. I was asked today to share about some of my most difficult times in my Christian life. Being part of the decision to close our beloved church is one of those times. I was lay leader at Plains during this time. As all of you can imagine, it was not an easy decision for our church council. It was a decision that was years in the making. It was a decision that hurt all of us as church leaders, but unfortunately, we ultimately needed to make this decision 
because financially our building, which was built in 1843, was our biggest financial burden. In the church council meetings leading up to this decision, I spent a lot of time reminiscing to myself and with my beloved church family, our good times and our difficult times. There were so many weddings, funerals, baptisms, and confirmations. All of my nieces and nephew were baptized in planes. I was married there. We held family funerals for my father and grandmother there. As well as many other friends and family members. On November 26, 2023, Plains United Methodist Church held our deconsecration service. If you're unfamiliar with this, which I hope most of you are, it is a service held on the last day a building will be used as a church. It is the act of removing a religious blessing from something that had been previously consecrated by a minister of that religion. It can be comparable for a funeral for the church building and the congregation. I was asked by the minister deconsecrating our church to play a role in this service because I was lay leader. And there were several other church members that day that also held roles. This day led up to several very difficult years and months for our congregation and church council. So that day, I knew at the time, God wasn't finished with me. I felt it in my heart. I wasn't sure what was next. But he was definitely not finished with me. My decision to join Trucksville, I feel, was partly fate, partly faith. And definitely your unrelenting hospitality, kindness, and encouragement. Two weeks after we closed Plains, I came here to church to see what it was like. And I had been stalking you on Facebook for years. So I need you to know that. <laughs> so before I got out of my car, I parked over in the parking lot. And I just prayed, please, Lord, help me get through this. I knew it was going to be emotional. I wasn't across the parking lot when Jill Kristen came out of the education building, introduced herself, and I am so thankful she did. She made that extremely difficult step manageable for me, and the kindness from everyone I met that morning and since has made this transition so much easier for myself and the rest of the planes train. That's one of my difficult times. I've had others, as I'm sure we all have. So another difficult time I'm choosing to tell you about this morning is May of 2010. My husband and I were married May 15th. My father passed away May 12th. We never anticipated having our wedding and losing a family member prior to the wedding and then having to bury my dad within the same week. But it happened. Pastor Paul was with us in the hospital when my dad passed away. He was our pastor at Plains at the time. He helped us in every aspect of getting through an extremely difficult time, but also needing to celebrate another occasion. He is most certainly one of a kind. Pastor Paul and Katie are a couple who enjoys being part of a church congregation. They are always willing to help. Pastor Paul especially liked being the official taste tester for our food-related events at Plains. <laughs> he taste tested the Easter eggs, the baked goods, and dinners. He took his position as official taste tester so seriously he would try multiple things several times just to ensure they met his standards. I can't wait for him to try your chicken barbecue because it's amazing. That's another plug, just saying, July 19th, get your tickets. In addition, Pastor Paul is a church minister who loves his church family. He cares so much about his flock. Pastor Paul is a visitor. He visits houses, hospitals, care homes, 
attends events where his church family needs his support. There were many times we would call and he would be there. No questions asked, giving his love and support, celebrating good times and assisting through difficult times. Pastor Paul played an important part in our community while serving at Plains as well. He became involved in our community there and I'm sure he will support the communities of the Back Mountain during his time at Trucksville. I hope this morning I have told you a little about my faith journey and some of the difficult difficulties I've experienced, as well as Rick and Mark. The Lord has blessed Trucksville in so many ways, and Pastor Paul and Katie will be another blessing bestowed upon us as a congregation and church family. Thank you for allowing me to share this with you this morning. I ask that we also please bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that you be with all of us during this time of transition. Please be with Pastor Jay through his retirement and some of his medical procedures coming up. Bless him with health and happiness. Please be with and bless Pastor Paul and Katie as well. Help them to settle into their new environment and living space with ease. Help us as a congregation to welcome them and be supportive. Lord, help us as we face this time of transition to call on you, knowing you always hear us. Help us lean on you instead of leaning on our own understanding. Give us the strength, courage, and confidence we need. And remind us always that you are aware of what touches us. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving us comfortless. Thank you for your great love. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So this, the song I chose was Pass It On because I feel like there is not just a spark here. There's a fire here, and it's really wonderful.
I just want to say, the people of Plains have not only arrived, they've been welcomed, they are immersed in this fellowship. You saw them collecting buckets. <laughs> they've already enrolled, uh, signed up to be part of committees, and be warned, you never know when that phone will ring. <laughs> And Becky, thank you. It takes a lot of courage to come up and speak. We are so blessed with your words. Your encouragement. Friends, next week, Pastor Paul and Katie will begin their ministry. And believe me, God is leading the way, lighting our path. Thank you for all the words that have been shared today. I invite you to be seated as we listen to our postlude. And just a final word of thanks. Courtney worked really hard to put together uh, a Facebook, as was mentioned, such a special part of our services. And she did all kinds of tweaks, you have no idea, to get today a uh, service together for us. Becky, you chose beautiful words in that song. Don't, sh uh, don't hide God's love. Go out, share it, pass it on. And my thanks to Adam, too, who also shared some words. We're going to print them in next week's newsletter. So look for that. My friends, we are good hands. We will be taken care of. Have no fear, no worry, trust. Go forth and serve our Lord. Amen.